Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna go over the steps on how to paint a smiling golden retriever. And hopefully you can't help but smile while you're painting this. So what you're gonna see in this video is what I call a supply kit. And there's gonna be links below, so check those out. And in that supply kit is gonna be everything that you need to create this painting. Another thing that you're gonna see is what we call a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get that initial image, that initial composition on your canvas before you even start painting. So check out the links below on where to acquire that traceable and then how to transfer that traceable to your surface. And again, it just makes it easier for you to have that on there before you even start painting. This series was actually created for first time and beginner painters to paint at home. So as you go through this process, I don't want you to take yourself too seriously. I want you to relax, paint a little expressive, paint outside the lines. Just use this as a place to practice and get more comfortable with your tools and the process of painting. So remember to breathe and relax as you go through this process. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and hopefully you've got your supplies and your setup all ready to go and your image transferred to your canvas. I want you to turn on your favorite music and turn it up kind of loud. I want you to enjoy yourself. And as always, take your progress pictures and keep those progress pictures. So on this painting, we're gonna be doing a smiling golden retriever. And once you've got your traceable or your composition on your canvas or your panel, we're gonna take our small pointy brush and black paint. And I want you to outline all those lines that you transferred. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to play with the pressure of your brush. The harder you push your brush against the canvas, the wider or the fatter the lines it makes. The lighter you can touch your brush to the canvas, the smaller or skinnier lines it makes. So again, just play with that because I just want you to get practice with this. Now we will repeat this step, so don't stress if some of your lines are wider, maybe some of them um, aren't filled in and completely. Don't stress about that. We are doing this just for practice right now. And it's kind of a good warm up too. So as you're doing these, make sure you're breathing. If you realize that you're holding your breath, take a deep breath right now and just relax. We do tend to hold our breath when we do something for the first time. So I'm just here to remind you to breathe. And thanks for showing up and painting today. Most people don't even get this far. So the fact that you're actually painting and actually doing this steps ahead of so many other people. So I encourage you to keep painting. This is a very therapeutic and healthy outlet to have. So I'm glad you're bringing this into your world. All right, so pause the video. Oh, so we're gonna go ahead and fill in the gum line here. Just kind of, it'll be dry when we put some other colors on top of it but the Goldens are known for having those black gum lines. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, take your progress picture and take a look at where colors were placed because we will be utilizing the pause feature quite often in this video. So now we're gonna paint the background and I'm gonna paint it light purple, but you can paint your background any color that you like. I recommend your favorite color or something to kind of match the interior of where this painting will be displayed. So to make light purple, I'm actually mixing white and purple, and you can kind of play with the amount of either color till you get to the shade that you like. And I did actually let my black paint dry before I added my background. If you're jumping right into your background, just be kind of conscious of how close you're coming to the black with your background color. 
If you happen to pick up some of that black in there, just use a paper towel and wipe it off and reapply your background. And I did let mine dry so that way I wouldn't have to deal with that. And you'll notice as I get um, to the area where we have the kind of the long, little pointy lines, little hair lines, I'm going to be overlapping that with my background color. So if you let it dry, then you don't have to worry about mixing the paint together. But we're going to be overlapping that. And then, like I said, at the end of the painting, we will be reapplying those kind of bold outlines that kind of gives it that cartoon feel. But we'll be adding more on top of this background color. So as you're painting your background, if you do have anything that has stressed you out during the day, traffic, something at work, family or friend drama, or just anything in general, I want you to put that into the painting. This is a very therapeutic outlet. And it's amazing how relaxing it is just to kind of move paint on canvas. So breathe and relax and put any energy, any frustrations, anything that you want into your painting this evening or today. And as I'm applying the paint, if this is your first time painting, I do actually encourage you to apply the paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with. This will give you some more maneuverability and workability to blend some other colors in there, and it won't dry out so quickly on you. This paint does dry in about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, if you apply it really thin, it's going to be a lot quicker drying time. So that's why I encourage beginner painters just a little bit thicker just until you get your comfort or your um, preferred method or preferred thickness when you paint. Now we'll be adding some other colors kind of choppy and I'll be going back and forth between just picking up some of that purple and some of that white and just painting right on top of the background and I am keeping rather expressive rather choppy brush strokes on there. So I'm just kind of using just the end of the brush and just kind of a quick back and forth motion. And this is what we call a wet on wet blending. The more you move your brush, the more the two colors blend together. So if you want to keep it kind of choppy, just a few little brush strokes. If you want to blend a little bit more, move your brush a little bit more um, to mix your colors. And you can only do this while the paint is wet. All right, so get your background to where you like it and pause the video and take your progress picture. We're gonna be moving into some of the shades of the fur of our golden retriever. All right, so we're gonna be starting with our darkest shades first. So we have some raw sienna on here. We're gonna be mixing it with a little bit of yellow because our golden retrievers do have that beautiful yellow coat. So we're using, like I said, the Burnt Sienna and yellow paint. And I'm still using the flat brush, the small flat brush. And you'll notice that when I apply the paint, when we get to the painting, that I'm going to hold the brush sideways and apply little dash marks, little quick overlapping dash marks. And we are applying these into the shadow areas, the darkest areas first. So I'm actually going to be grabbing more Burnt Sienna, going a little darker. And as you're painting this today, get a little expressive, get a little sloppy with these brush strokes. We're going to be doing some overlapping brush strokes. But again, just kind of find your comfort, your feel for this. And here you can actually see that I did pick up some of the black from my outline. It wasn't fully dry. If that happens, don't stress about it. I'm actually going to grab more of my pigment and just paint on top of that and work that into it. So kind of any Bob Ross fans out there, he called them happy accidents. You just learn to work with it. And half the time it does turn out to look out kind of cool. So again, I want to encourage you to utilize the pause functions on this video and pause the video so that way you can observe where each color was placed before I move on to the next color, the next step. And those of you that have been watching some of my other videos, hopefully you're seeing uh, the things that I'm learning and implementing as I grow and get more comfortable with the video process and the YouTube and editing. 
I'm trying to get some different camera angles and trying to paint a little differently so that way my hand isn't in the way. And as you go through the process of painting, you're going to realize the same thing about yourself. You're going to find ways to apply the paint that are a little bit more comfortable, ways that you like working with it, colors that you like, brushes that you like. So I encourage you to just experiment, try a bunch of different things and find what works for you. Because really that's the only way any of us grow. As we're getting into some of these spaces, if this middle, um, if this small flat brush is too wide or too much for you, feel free to move down to the small pointy brush and you can do the same type of brush strokes. Again, if you find that you're holding your breath right now, take a deep breath, relax. This painting is going to be kind of nice as we watch it evolve from color to color which is why your progress pictures are very important. I want you to look back at those later and just see the evolution of your painting. All right, so go ahead and pause the video. Take a look at where each of these colors were added and the shape, the weird organic and abstract shape that it makes. And now we're gonna be using a little more raw sienna, the lighter one, some yellow and a little bit of white. And again, you can see how I'm just kind of blending right on top of the same pile. Nope, and we forgot the white. There we go. Now we're going to add a little bit of white. That's closer to the color I was looking for. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself. So feel free. If you maybe make a color and you apply it to your canvas and it's not looking right, go ahead and adjust it on your plate. That's a little bit of that color theory that I was talking about. You interpret a color differently based on the color that's next to it. So you may mix a color on your plate, but when you put it on your canvas or your artwork, you realize it looks a little differently, so you have to adjust. And that is one of the biggest things in art. You constantly are adjusting based on what you did prior or what color you applied or application that you did to your creative project. All right, and as you're applying this, again, you'll use, utilize that pause section and see where everything was placed. And if you happen to overlap some of your darker colors that we applied a moment ago, don't worry about it. It actually helps with a little bit of your blending. And again, if that middle or that small flat brush is too big, feel free to move down to the small pointy brush, or if you're working on a larger canvas, feel free to move to a larger brush. All right, and again, overlapping some of those colors. Making it, and if you have to make your shade again, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. A little variety is actually to your benefit for the overall aesthetic of your painting. And again, you'll see where I overlap even the background. When we get to that final step of doing the black outline again, that kind of brings it all together. All right, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you. All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture, and keep moving forward. We're going to go with a little bit lighter color now. So you can see that I'm actually mixing on top of the same pile that I was just using for the darker shade, but we'll be adding more white to this mixture, going one shade lighter. And again, if you apply it to your canvas and you realize it needs to be lighter, go ahead and adjust your color. And you'll be amazed how different this looks once we fill in all that white canvas space. And that's what we call our underpainting. And you also have to keep in mind that you are a magician today as you paint. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. So even though it's a golden retriever and we've got different shades here, it's how we place those shades next to each other 
that creates that illusion. It makes one area look like it pushed back and another area feel like it pulls forward. Again, you're creating magic. So we're going to be kind of filling in the remaining canvas space with this really light color, except for the tongue and the nose. We'll be going back to other shades for those. But again, through your progress pictures, really cool how you can see how this changes as we basically have three simple different shades on here. Good job. So yeah, take your progress picture, pause the video. All right, so we're gonna fill in the tongue. So I am going down to the small pointy brush. And to make your light pink, we'll pull a little white aside and a small amount of red goes a long way to make a light pink. And we are going to start with a light pink and fill in that entire tongue space. If you happen to go over those black, that black line in the middle or the edge lines, again, not a problem. There we go. Yep, get that other little gum line over there. Now we're going to make a darker shade of pink and paint right on top of this lighter shade. And as you can see, I'm doing little dots. And you can see that it actually quite quickly diffuses in with that lighter pink. So I'm going to add a little bit more red and go a little darker. There we go. And again, still just kind of doing that, those little dots on there and allowing that lighter pink to mix with the darker pink that I'm applying on top of it. We're going to make a grayish pink next. So add just a smidge of black in with your pink mixture. You need to create a bit more of a cool shadow. All right, and we are putting wet paint on top of wet paint. So the color is going to change as we blend and mix with it. And use light pressure on your brush with this. So that way you can do a bit more blending. There we go. And I even grab some straight black and put it directly on top of that, but it's mixing with the color underneath so it's not a pure black. And again, we're creating that illusion that this tongue is disappearing into the back of the mouth. If you get to a point where it gets too much, feel free to wipe your brush off and then just use a kind of a clean brush or a brush with no paint on it to mix and blend some of those shades. All right, so pause your video, take a progress picture, and just kind of observe where each of those shades was added. All right, we're going for a dark gray. We're gonna be moving into the nose. Again, we're going to kind of fill in those nostrils, that dark area, darkest area of the nose. And it's okay to laugh while it looks kind of funny as it's being shaped. It's not going to stay this way forever. We're just getting our base colors on there. Now I'm going to add a little more white, going for that medium gray, so a little lighter than what we were just using. And again, filling in more of the nose space. And amazing how different it looks as we start taking away that last bit of that white canvas space. Now the nose looks a bit more like a nose once we take that away. Nice. So going back to black and painting right on top of this again, making those nostrils even darker. 
and a little bit more shading at the base of the nose. And just like the tongue, it is mixing with that lighter gray underneath. All right, so taking an even lighter gray, we're gonna add some highlights to the nose. And again, just notice where they're placed. I'm gonna do a little residual catch light at the bottom part of the nose, almost like a tiny little smiley face underneath the nostril. And then we're gonna kinda get that top middle section of the nose where the light is hitting first. And we're gonna go a little bit lighter Oh, we're going back. We're taking that section of that gum line off, so feel free to take that out on yours. I do tend to change things sometimes in the middle of a painting. All right, pause the video, look and see where all those shades were added. And now we're going back to the raw sienna with a little bit of yellow. And we're going a little darker, so add a touch of black to that. We're going to go back and strengthen or darken our shadows. Kind of where the ears meet the head is where our darkest kind of folds our shadows are going to be and we're going to make those just a little bit darker now that we have our underpainting completed and i am still using that small pointy brush to make some smaller brush strokes all right you're doing a great job Hopefully you're enjoying the music you've got playing, enjoying your progress, forgetting that the rest of the world exists out there, and just relaxing. All right, so adding some more shadows around the eyes and into, again, where the ears meet the head. And this is what helps us create that magical illusion of this 3D object on a flat surface. When we intensify our shadows, our contrast, where our dark spaces are next to a light space, that's what gives us that illusion. As you're painting, and as you take your progress pictures, um, I'm going to encourage you to study the pictures on your phone, because when you look at them on your phone, it's the same thing as looking at your painting from a distance. All right, so pause the video, look and see where all those colors were added. And we're gonna be making a lighter color. We're gonna take our raw sienna, our yellow and our white. And we're gonna be placing it on top of that, those lips above the mouth. Mixing in with our other colors, we're adding some more of our highlight value. And I'm using the small pointy brush and kind of short, choppy little brush strokes. It is mixing with the color that we already laid in there, so just kind of keep blending and playing with that. All right, pause the video. Take your progress picture. And now we're going even lighter. A very, very light raw sienna color, adding some highlights on top of our lighter shade. And again, putting this lighter shade next to a place where we had the darker shade next to it helps create that illusion, that 3D rendering. And kind of at this point, I'm actually almost grabbing a pure white. So if you are grabbing some pure white, totally okay. And again, just notice the placement and the little shape that it has to where I'm applying it. If yours is a little bit different, that's good. Keep going with it. We all have different personalities, different painting styles, and you are learning how yours works. All right, let's add a little more, just kind of to these places that the light would be hitting. And again, it creates that illusion that roundness, that volume of what we're painting. Breathe and relax. You're doing a great job. Don't 
don't analyze what you're painting or how it looks until we're done. And again, you get better the more that you practice. Be kind to yourself. I'm so proud of you for just showing up and painting and giving it a try. All right, and still pretty cool that you can see that we're adding this light shade, this almost pure white, to various places around the painting, but it does look different based on the color that's next to it. I find it fascinating. I love it. All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture. Right, we're going to add a little bit of pure white a few key areas. And again, some of this may make more sense as you step away from the painting or look at it on your phone after you've taken a progress picture. But again, we're creating this wonderful illusion of light and shadow to create this golden retriever. As you're making some of these small lines, don't stress, they get better with practice. If you're a beginner painter, some of these lines might be a little fatter than you want. That's okay. That's part of the process. All right, so take your progress picture and we're gonna be moving into black paint. We're gonna redo those outlines and kind of bring this whole painting together. So your small pointy brush or even your liner, um, we're gonna be using black paint and going over all those original outlines. Now as you're doing this, if you wanna add a little bit of water to your brush or to that black paint, it will help give you a little bit more fluid, a um, <clears throat> little bit more flow with your brush, but you never want your brush dripping wet. So again, just kind of play with it. You're getting good practice with brush control. And hopefully you're having a relaxing time while you paint this. If you need to steady your hand as you're doing this, um, you can kind of put your pinky out onto a dry spot on your canvas and use that as kind of your pivot point as you move your hand around, or you can rest your forearm against the table. Kind of find what works for you so you can keep that balance and that pressure. And if you need to move your canvas or turn your canvas in a different direction, because making a brush stroke is easier in one direction compared to another, feel free to move your canvas. You don't have to keep it in the same position all the time. Nice. It's already coming together so nicely. It's amazing what these black lines do to kind of give it that cartoon and even kind of finished feeling. And take a deep breath right now. Kind of find some deep rhythmic breathing as you're going through this. I don't want you to stop until you're done with all the outlines. Then I want you to get out of your chair and step back and look at it from that distance. This guy's turning out really cute. And we don't even have to put eyes in there and he still looks like such a happy dog. Again, as you're doing, working with the small pointy brush, if you twirl your brush as you pull it out of the paint, helps kind of keep those bristles together. And again, just mind the pressure of your brush. Here you can see where I put my pinky out, just kind of use that as my steadying, my pivot point. 
And after a while it does become pretty natural. It took me a while to get used to it. I normally paint with a palette knife, so brushwork was um, definitely kind of a different flow for me. And again here you can see that I'm using just the tip of the brush to apply and after every couple of brush strokes then I actually have to get more paint on there. So kind of keep that in mind as you're painting and continuing to use. It's easy to see when we're using the black but remember when we're using other colors you do kind of get into a groove and you have to keep picking up more paint to keep your flow going. It's coming along nicely. I do hope you are finding this process enjoyable. Um, I hope you're painting some of the other painting classes I have out there, or tutorials. I encourage all my students to take classes from a variety of teachers. Take the parts that work from each teacher, forget the rest. Picking up in the middle at like 21.02. <clears throat> color, adding some highlights on top of our lighter shade. And again, putting this lighter shade next to a place where we had the darker shade next to it helps create that illusion, that 3D rendering. And kind of at this point, I'm actually almost grabbing a pure white. So if you are grabbing some pure white, totally okay. And again, just notice the placement and the little shape that it has to where I'm applying it. If yours is a little bit different, that's good. Keep going with it. We all have different personalities, different painting styles, and you are learning how yours works. All right, let's add a little more, just kind of to these places that the light would be hitting. And again, it creates that illusion that roundness, that volume of what we're painting. Breathe and relax. You're doing a great job. Don't analyze what you're painting or how it looks until we're done. And again, you get better the more that you practice. Be kind to yourself. I'm so proud of you for just showing up and painting and giving it a try. All right, it's still pretty cool that you can see that we're adding this light shade, this almost pure white, to various places around the painting, but it does look different based on the color that's next to it. I find it fascinating. I love it. 
All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture. Hey guys, I hope you had a great time painting this smiling golden retriever and then they turned out really well for you. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy. I really want to see your final pieces and the progress that you're going through. And again, I just like to see what you're painting at home. So thanks so much for joining me and getting creative today. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Check out the other videos that I have. Um, check out the future ones that I'll be creating, but please keep painting at home. It is so healthy for you to do that. And it's just a nice stress reliever from the world. So again, thanks for joining me today. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. with the plane. Um, the future things that I'll be creating, you're killing me. Why is your brain doing this?